We're excited to have Ken Campbell, CEO of Gunsight Academy, rejoin the show right after this. But first, maybe you heard of Mike Lindell and MyPillow. Well, his company was banned because he stood against the cancel culture mob. What happened to MyPillow is not right. Our freedom of speech is just as important as our freedom of self-defense. We are thrilled to support an American company like MyPillow. Go to MyPillow.com and use a promo code FREEMARKET3 and get up to 66% off America's best pillows. Get a great night's sleep and enjoy the satisfaction of supporting companies fighting against cancel culture. That's MyPillow.com and use the code FREEMARKET3 for up to 66% off. All right, so uh, we have uh, Ken Campbell with us. Comrade Campbell, are you out there? Hey, hey, free America calling, free America calling. All John right. has a long mustache, just like D-Day. <laughs> All right, welcome to the People's Republic. So, um, <laughs> Fortunately, I'm, I'm in free America. I'm in Arizona. So, <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh, you were feeling under the weather last time I talked to you. You uh, all recovered and happy again? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I got my, uh, my mute button ready to push here because I, I had a little bout with COVID, um, my wife and I did, we had basically the flu for about a day and a half that we got onto the hy- uh, hydrochloroquine and, and it, uh, it, it worked for us. And I, I was back at it for a week. So I got a little bit of fatigue and again, I hack a little bit, but oh, well, you know, it's the life, life's better than I deserve. I thought you always hacked, <laughs> but, um, pardon me. <laughs> I, said, I thought you always hacked, but, uh, oh, yeah, well, I, I kind of do, but. Cigars and bourbon usually cure it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You, uh, if you'd have caught the uh, first uh, few minutes of the show, we were talking a little bit about that. I think uh, Michael discovered his favorite new whiskey. Yeah, Campfire by uh, oh. by High West. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna I'm gonna have to write that one down and uh, and uh, look for it at the store. So yeah, we're uh, talking about that too because I think I'm I'm uh, rediscovering bourbon now. So I'm uh, I've been been dealing with Buffalo Trace and uh, and I was telling you my wife. Um, Got me a bottle of Blantons for uh, my birthday, so um, so that was God working out really well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yes, it is. So hey, that, Ken, that's my uh, that's my holiday bourbon. You know, one for the special occasions is Blantons. And that's what I'm thinking. If I, you know, I only have one birthday a year, so I'm, I'm thinking that that's okay. I can We're splurge going on bourbon that. again. I know. <laughs> What's up? With the show's getting better and better. Better and better. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to it. So, Ken, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, you being from uh, Free America and all right now, uh, a lot going on in that Arizona area. And I, w- I wanted to ask you, you know, your feel for, um, you know, how are the people looking at that? Like, you've got the uh, that audit that's going on about the election and, um, you know, all the threats from D.C. about gun ownership and all the things that, you know, the president wants to ban now and everything. What's the feel in there in your area? Because, you know, you're plugged in, obviously, with all the gun owners that way. Well, you know, we live up in, in northern Arizona, uh, in the Prescott area, and that's, uh, it's very different than Maricopa County, than Phoenix. Uh, the demographics there are very different. It's a, it's a more liberal community there. Um, but that's where the audit's going on, and, and it's, it's very, very polarized. Uh, it, it's, it's uh, folks are either very much for it or very much against it. The Board of Supervisors in Maricopa County are are fighting the uh, state Senate every step of the way that they can. You know, I, I'm just an old country sheriff, but uh, uh, I always thought that sunlight was a good thing. And uh, the more you can bring things out in daylight, uh, the better off you are. So why fight them? Uh, let them do their audit and get this done and see where we are. But uh, it, it's very polarized down in Maricopa County, but up in, in Yavapai County, up in the Prescott area, it's, uh, I think the public very much wants to see this audit and get get the smoke blown away yeah and that's what um what, that's what we would hope it would be anyway and you guys you know at gun site you get students from all over the country that come out there basically and you know these are gun people these are serious people that take the time and, and the expense and everything to come out and train with the best at gun site and um what do you hear from people around the country about just again the political climate the threats the second amendment that kind of stuff because we have kind of a skewed view out here um, you know, being in California, you, but we're seeing a lot of California residents. Uh, they, they come, come over and, and are taking classes because just like other folks around the country, um, the, the folks that are more liberal minded are coming to the realization that the world may not be the, 
the rainbows and unicorns that they once thought it was, and they need to uh, learn how to protect themselves. And maybe these gun laws aren't uh, aren't such good things. I've heard from uh, from some folks in California, matter of fact, that they decided they wanted to go buy a gun and they went in. And it's like, wait, what do you mean? Wait, what do I have to wait for? Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm an honest person. So some of those folks are waking up uh, with us. Uh, we think it's an opportunity. Uh, when we can train these folks up to uh, bring them from the dark side, if you will. and uh, But we're seeing, again, more and more of these folks that are not traditional gun owners are becoming gun owners, and they're recognizing these laws uh, are here to protect them. Not the gun, not the anti-gun laws, but the, the Second Amendment type laws. Yeah, and you know, we hear that too from uh, a lot of the shop owners around here, um, you know, talking about the new people, the first-time gun owners, uh, and uh, when they go in to buy that gun, uh, a lot of them are shocked at what it goes through because they've been listening for years how easy it is to get a gun. Everybody's got guns. And then they go in and they run into the, you know, our 10-day waiting period and the background checks and all that. And, uh, you know, you hear a lot of shock over that kind of stuff. Right, and, and we hear that echoed as well um, from the California residents, but, again, folks from all over the country. Uh, come here to gun site from from coast to coast, uh, and uh, uh, these folks are are just very becoming more and more pro gun. The ones that before would not have had one. We see folks. We do private classes also, and we're seeing some of that where it's folks that are not gun people, and we think they just want to stay within their own clan so that other people don't know they're taking gun training because of their former background um as being uh anti-gun yeah i can't i just had lunch today with a with a with a couple who wants to get more active with uh san diego county gun owners and uh they talked about how they really don't talk about the fact that they're gun owners in most of their social circles um you know that's something we're trying to change i think it's it's crucial it's a crucial thing to to change is is that sneaking it, it around is. and they, they need we need to get the word out that we're the mainstream people, right? Not the people that are the antis. Um, we got some folks that you know they they don't want to have their picture taken when they're here. They don't want to be in the class photo uh, because of that. But that that's when they need to step up and say, no, I, I'm I'm America. I, I'm I'm a U.S. citizen and I'm exercising my rights. Uh, so shame on you if you can't if you can't we can't agree to disagree on it. Um, there's nothing wrong with you and I, you know, as neighbors. If you don't want to have a gun, that's fine, but don't don't punish me uh, because I do want to exercise my rights. Well, and these folks need to step up and stand up. It's true. People assume that Joe and Dave and I do this radio show because we're extremely good looking and we don't mind putting it out there. But it's actually more than that. It's not. We're not just pretty faces. You know, you have to stand up for what you believe in. Well, I heard you guys have faces for radio. <laughs> ah, yes, we do. Hi, ho. <laughs> so we're, we're just we're just plugging along here with folks, and we do everything we can. I, I spent the last two evenings at Friends of the NRA dinners here in the area. Uh, nice. They're uh, well well attended. It's great seeing those back again. You know, with COVID, uh, uh, without the COVID restrictions like we had a year ago. So it's good being around these great like minded people. Now, are you a shotgun instructor? Is that is that you know is that a part of your expertise? Um, well, I don't know that I'm an expert about it, but that's one of the things I can teach here. Yes, uh, we're seeing more and more folks uh, in classes in shotgun classes, and more and more folks with revolvers in classes. Uh, we think some of that is that uh, people are thinking that well, if they're going to restrict guns, those may be the ones they don't restrict as quickly. Well, the, we're seeing a lot of shotguns. On the other class. side of the commercial, I want to ask you some shotgun questions. Okay, I'm yeah. good for that. RMI Mortgage, primerez.com slash alpine. Are you in the military looking for help with a VA loan? Or maybe if you're looking to buy, refi, or just considering a reverse mortgage, call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. Call Chris Wiley at 619-722-1303 or just go to primerez.com slash alpine. So we're on with Ken Campbell. Ken, here's my shotgun question. Okay. So a lot of folks uh, that use, which I'm a huge fan of shotguns. I think that uh, people are buying too many ARs. 
and not enough shotguns. Uh, I know a lot of people that have multiple ARs and zero shotgun. I think that's a mistake. I love shotguns. I think they're they're really really great. Um, so a lot of people use shotguns for self defense. And do you recommend? You know, they use the you know double aught uh, uh, buck, which has you know nine little 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 shot balls in it. Um, typically, right. thirty two caliber pellets. Now, typically, do you recommend the flight control? Uh, I'll tell you what I do. Uh, back uh, again, when I was a baby cop, we were issued Remington eight seventies and Smith and Wesson model fifteens, and and we took care of business with it. Um, uh, then, then you got into where uh, you were really starting to get serious about patterning your shotgun, making sure you you're responsible for each one of those nine thirty two caliber pellets when you send it down range. Uh, right, the bad guy's name's on the front, your name's on the back, and there's a contrail with a whole bunch of attorneys' uh, names <laughs> in that contrail following those pellets. Right, so uh, uh, we started getting serious about patterning, and that's when like Van Comp systems and so on they started doing serious work on getting guns to to tighten up and then federal flight control came out and man oh man it uh i don't know what voodoo magic they use uh but it, it works and it keeps a nice tight pattern and lets you get a little more distance uh with that uh with that double lot buck pattern and and that's crucial because again we're responsible for each one of those pellets we send down range now so here's my question about that and this is truly uh, from a perspective of total ignorance I really I, I don't know this answer and I'm looking for someone like yourself uh, who knows more than I do about this to, to give me their perspective um, why aren't we using slugs for for self-defense and shotguns if you know if we're looking for that tight tight pattern and you know all the myths about shotguns you know you don't have to aim you know none of that's true you get a nice tight pattern if we're doing that why aren't we just using slugs? Well, you've been listening to Joe Biden again, right? Just step out on the porch with that double barrel <laughs> shotgun. And, right. right. So anyway, um, the slugs are great. But, you know, they're, a 12 gauge slug is a one ounce, three quarter inch flying doorknob of death. Uh, it, it does a tremendous job on, on stopping a, a, a lethal threat at you. But it also, you may have some penet over penetration issues with that. Um, with the double op buck, um, Again, you've got nine pellets in there. They're 32 caliber. Um, I, I, I can't disagree with using either. Back in my cop days, I carried all slugs in my gun. I wanted to be responsible for one bullet. I didn't want to be responsible for all nine. Um, I, I knew what, how my gun was patterned. So I can argue both sides of this. Um, the the uh, double op buck is very devastating. When it hits somebody, and it, it is very apt to stop the fight right then and there. But then again, so is that 12-gauge slug. So um, the advantage of the slug is you're going to have greater distance. right? Once, once you exceed, even with federal flight control, once you're exceeding 10, 15 yards, those 932 caliber pellets are going to be bigger. The pattern's going to be bigger than, let's just call it a paper plate as opposed to your face. Right, because once once it exceeds that target area, those pellets are missing, and they're going into that busload of nuns and orphans uh, that's driving down the road. With the slug, you're, it's it's one bullet, so you don't have to worry about your your range. That is, at well, at 12 yards, this gun, uh, I'm good. But once I hit about 14, 15 yards, I've got to do a select slug drill and get a slug in the gun and and that double op buck out. So it, it depends on how serious you want to be about it, how hard you want to train. Uh, but shotguns are are wonderful uh, self defense weapons. And and last last shotgun question: Have you do you have any experience? I think it's Winchester has this. I think it's PDX Defender or something like that. But it's it's uh, a slug and then three little uh, three little uh, thirty two caliber uh, pellets. Um, any experience with that? Is that is that you know is that a gimmick or is that good or? I, I can't speak to that. I've not shot it, okay. but um, simpler is better. Um, do you really know what the pattern's going to be with that smaller slug and those little balls? Why, why, why pick one or the other? Yeah. You've okay. got 932 caliber balls. You know exactly how it's going to pattern if you pattern your gun properly, or you've got that slug that you know where it's going to go. So when you start uh, mixing things up here, that, that just complicates the problem. All right. I appreciate it. Great perspective. That's great. Learn so much out here too. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Ken, I'm going to be um, going to be out to see you here in October for the gas match, and uh, that is such a cool event. 
And uh, could you say a few words about that there for people that may not right. know what that is? The Gunsight Alumni Shoot is a, uh, a shooting match. You have to be Gunsight Alumni to attend, but it's an all-day shooting match. Our great instructors donate their time, their travel. We donate the ranges. And the monies we raise, 95% of it goes to the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation, which is a 501c3 run by the, the uh, Cooper's daughters and granddaughter. They give scholarships. And then about 5% of the money goes to the Yavapai County Friends of the NRA dinners. I was just at those the last two nights where we donate prizes and guns and so on. So it's an all-day shooting match. It's people you've been in classes with. It's instructors you have, you've had before. Our, our term for it is it's a social engagement slightly interrupted by gunfire. Um, but we've got the pro everybody wins great prizes. Crimson Trace is a ten dollars to $15,000 prize sponsor. Um, Van Comp, Remington, Glock, Smith & Wesson, um, and on and on and on. We have great relationships with our with our industry partners, and our prize table is full, so everybody wins cool prizes. Yeah, it is such the a great event. First Saturday in October. And, uh, first Saturday in October, the weather's good. It's just fun. Yeah, and it's beautiful out there. The uh, The match is a lot of fun. The prize table is outstanding, and uh, it's just a really overall <clears throat> great event. The other thing, too, um, I'll be out to see you in April, actually. Uh, my wife and I are coming out. I, I, and uh, I just saw that paperwork go through. I keep track of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Somebody's I'm got forward. to. Well, I'm looking forward to it because uh, she's going to do a PCC class, which um, which is great because I, I got her one of those for uh, Christmas. I got her a Ruger PCC, and uh, and she's just psyched up about it. She's having fun shooting it. And I thought while she's out there, I'll do the uh, close quarter combat pistol class because uh, I want to do that. Perfect, but perfect. But you guys have quarter good. Ibuprofen will be your friend, just so you know. <laughs> well, uh, I know you guys have so much to offer. There's so many classes out there. Uh, say a little bit about what Gunsight's got. Well, uh, our website, gunsight.com, G-U-N-S-I-T-E.com, has got all our classes. But we offer a variety of levels of pistol, carbine, rifle, shotgun, long-range rifle. We have classes out to 2,400 yards. We do, uh, this coming week, we've got ladies' pistol, where some ladies just don't want to learn with men in class. We've got uh, what's called BRAVE, Ballistic Response Against Violent Encounters, and that's some street crimes, home defense, uh, vehicle defense, some grappling, some, some trauma med. It's some real good real-world uh, training along in there. Uh, our advanced classes start with the 250 pistol. Um, We've just got a little bit of everything here. We've got tact med classes. I know you guys are going to be talking about that, or you have been this month. Uh, our tactical medicine class began uh, with the military uh, 20 years ago, and it was a five-day class uh, based on wartime model. Now our tactical medicine class is based on active shooter. It's a two-day model. It's taught by trauma uh, doctors uh, and paramedics. Uh, real-world stuff. Uh, I don't want to call it wilderness medicine, but it would apply to that as well. But how do you keep your buddy alive for an hour or two until the cavalry can get there to help? And that's great. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you about that because when I was browsing through, um, you know, I got my wife signed up for the PCC class and I'm, I'm looking around saying, okay, what else is going on that week that I can take? And uh, and I did notice the um, that two-day uh, medical trauma class, which wasn't scheduled the same week I'm going to be out there, but... Uh, but I thought that was great. I hadn't noticed that out there before. And you're yeah, saying it, we try to we, we try to do it on the weekend, so you can kind of sandwich it uh, either the front end or the back end of a class. Uh, but it's it's uh, very popular. So brave ballistic response against, against violent en encounters. That's awesome. Now is that is that your program or is that like a particular curriculum? Well, it's a it's a, a curriculum that some of our staff members wrote a few years back, and it continues to evolve. You know, we, you know, we uh, try to run faster and jump higher as we see changes we need to make. There's uh, also in that class, there's force on force, simunitions type things. So you're actually uh, working against a thinking uh, adversary. Uh, uh, we've got Brave coming up this week, and it's so popular, we even made an enhanced ver version called Brave 2. Yeah, and I think that's been and a lot of Barbie. Yeah. Well, because I, I took the uh, 350 class with the instructor or one of the instructors that came up with the Brave course, and I can't recall his name right now, but... Uh, uh, but Bob just, Whaley or Jay Tuttle or... Um, no, I want to say it was Bob. Bob Whaley or Jay Tuttle. 
Yeah, yeah probably and, Bob uh, Whaley. He was, he's the author of it. Yeah, and he was telling us about it in class, and it just sounded great. So that's another one that's on my list for coming out there. It, it's it's absolutely real world stuff. That that's what it's based on. Not that two fifty pistol and three fifty aren't, but this setup is you know that scenario based stuff. So the are you're working around vehicles, you're working around. We set up uh, fake ATMs, we set up home defense, so that uh, it gives you a lot to think about and plan when you do go home. And and that stuff's a lot of fun too. I know in the 350 class, just a little bit of force on force we had in there was just that was my first exposure to that, and that's just a blast. And I think they do more of that in the Brave class. Is that right? They do. That's correct. We'll either use sim munitions or we'll use airsoft, depending on uh, what we need to do, how, how we read the class. All yeah. right, Ken. Hey, unfortunately, we got to go. It's always a joy talking to you. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you guys. You just give, give us a call anytime. Uh, come out and see us again. You know, we love seeing you. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. You can watch us live every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're in the San Diego area, you can listen to us on 1170 a.m. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can help restore and protect the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.